The Albright Kemper Museum of Art holds a collection of landscape paintings that vary from an idealistic look at westward expansion, pastoral scenes of peace and reflection, and a leisurely sail around the cove. Keep in mind that these artists likely sketched their subjects in person before taking their drawings back to their studios to paint. Albert Bierstadt was a German immigrant to the United States. He studied art in Dusseldorf and is best known for his paintings created after he traveled out west in the mid to late 1800s. First, with a U.S. Army mapping expedition and at least five other occasions, sketching and photographing his experiences. While his large-scale horizontal landscapes are more distinctive of Bierstadt's style, near Big Tree Grove, Kings River, 1873, is painted on a vertical canvas about two and a half feet tall, showcasing the impossibly large trees, deep valley, and tall mountains in the background. This is an idealized view of uncultivated resources. The beautiful atmospheric lighting encourages the idea of manifest destiny, inspiring westward expansion. Martin Johnson Heed was a luminist, meaning there is a presence of light within his paintings. Field with Haystacks, Gray Sky, 1874, is typical of Heed's paintings. He was fascinated by the salt marsh hayfields, being calm and ordered compositions. Growing up along the Delaware River in Pennsylvania, he was trained in painting by a sign painter. His failed attempts at portrait painting gave way to his humble landscape paintings, encouraging tranquility in the familiar, opposed to the excitement of Bierstadt's grandiose landscape paintings. Born in Massachusetts, Fitzhugh Lane is also considered a luminist painter. This was not a school of thought, but rather a common visual understanding of light, color, and atmosphere. Lane was trained as an artist in Boston and focused on marine subjects. He was most interested in painting the quiet calm of twilight and the rigging of ships in precise detail, as seen here in Christmas Cove, Maine, 1858. The subject isn't likely to be a real place, for like Bierstadt, Lane would have sketched in many different places before composing a painting to fit his artistic style. George Innes was trained in the Hudson River School style, which encouraged landscapes in precise details and deep colors encouraged by Romanticism. Innes traveled to Europe in the mid-1800s, and his style changed to something closer to tonalism, in which chromatic unity of a painting has less detail and more emphasis on soft light. The glow of the dying light is what is important to Innes in the pastoral scenes of Italian landscape and A Sunset, both painted in the late 1870s. Details can be deciphered, but trees and fields of grass tend to blend together as one. Jane Freiliger was a New York artist who was trained at Hans Hoffmann's School of Fine Arts. She studied abstract painting, but worked mostly in still lifes and landscapes. The Game on the Lawn, 1976, depicts a group of people enjoying the outdoors who are dwarfed by an expansive landscape of unnaturally bright greens and blues. This loose composition is the artist's view from her Long Island studio. It is not meant to be a document of the landscape, but rather the artist's representation based on her impulses, sensations, and emotions. Wolf Kahn and his family fled Nazi Germany in 1939 and moved to New York City. He also studied at Hoffman's and later at the University of Chicago. A trip to Italy inspired Kahn to paint landscapes in impasto, a thick layering of paint. He painted improbable color fields, quote, trying to get to the danger point in color, where color becomes too sweet or it becomes too harsh, it becomes too noisy or too quiet, end quote. While Afterglow in Mexico, 1992, was painted in garish colors, it attracts people to stop and enjoy the warmth of this painted sunset.